By the time Rome lands, yes, we'll probably be about 20 techs ahead of them. Well, I mean, you're going to be launching your, your first space flight rocket, and they're going to be, like, looking at stone. Ah, oh, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today I've been given the wonderful opportunity to show off Imperator Rome to you ahead of its release. Now, just a few disclaimers. This key was given to me by Paradox, but it is in no way a sponsored video. However, because we are still under embargo, I'm not allowed to give you a review of the game of any sort. I'm instead just going to be playing it for my amusement and your entertainment. Now, we are also playing on a pre-release version of the game, so things may differ from what you're seeing here today, but I decided I'd jump into a brand new game, which isn't even released yet and break it because I know so many of you in the community are like, look, if you break all of these old games, can you break new games? Yes, I can break games before they're even released as games. Honestly, with powers of tea, anything's possible. So make sure you have your powers of tea as well. And in fact, tell me what tea you're drinking today because today is going to be a glorious day for us tea drinkers. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Make sure to give it a like, it really does help me out, trust me. Each individual like makes a huge difference in YouTube's whimsical ways of deciding what actually gets thrown into the algorithm. And if this video does well in the algorithm, then don't worry, we get ever so slightly closer to the second British Empire. So if anything, hitting the like button saves the British Empire. Although I imagine by saying that, I'm going to accidentally cause all the American viewers to hit the dislike button. Oh no. Right, we need to bring back the subliminal tea campaign again, don't we, Queenie? Anyway, let's dive into this video. Right, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Smithing Brit, and today you join me in imp to Rome. Last time we got kicked out of Phrygia and we're now in a much nicer nation, okay, the Brigantia. They are basically the Brits and we're going to have a fun time leading them to success. So, welcome to the live screen, ladies and gentlemen, where you can see our glorious nation, the Brigantia. As you can see, in the last session, we expanded into the Isle of Man and colonised it. We also colonised parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. I know, perfect, isn't it? But there's so much more to be done. You see, we need to expand and take over the entirety of the United Kingdom. And only then will we be able to defeat Egypt, also known as many a true nerd. Many a true nerd, more like many a true smell. Oh, we got him, guys. There's no way he's going to be able to recover from that. Yes, this is our aim today, ladies and gentlemen. Defeat many a true nerd and lead our people into success. Uh, so today, I'm going to be doing a few exploits, basically, to show off a few of my favorite glitches in the game. What I'll be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is exploiting a few mechanics where I have the ability to uh, basically generate infinite research. The Briganti Nation is led by a lovely friend here, Akko Vadinius. Let's be honest, he's not the best. The Brigantia, we're a tribal nation, which means our armies cost more, fight worse, and are just generally a little bit trashy, but... We have one advantage, and that is that we're a small nation, which allows me to do a tinsy wincy teeny exploit which a large nation like Phrygia just can't do. Finally, okay, so the game is underway. It's paused. Nice, okay, so this is going to give us a few minutes to set up. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to talk you through our nation. So we are the Brigantia. We're going to probably go to war against Coronova. Now, Coronova have um, absolutely no allies, as far as I'm aware, so we can just declare war on them, and we're going to uh, solo take them by ourselves. So yes, we're going to day one declare war. We're bam. Their entire army is positioned here. Now, it does look a bit scary at 14k, but don't worry. Uh, it should be quite easy and tasty to defeat. What else will we be doing? Well, of course, we want to colonize Ireland. That's something we'll be doing. Uh, probably deal with this area here. The nation of Cavitia, they control a decent amount of land that really should be ours. And then we'll slowly expand south, probably taking over Wales and the Debonia, Icenia. So as expected, the AI did not fund their army for morale, meaning our armies are going to smash them. Oh, perfect, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, my warlords. Fight the incredibly under-equipped units. Perfect. Perfect. Now, one thing we're going to do is take a look at this lovely system over here. Now, this is called technology. Now, we generate 3.8 research points per month. And at the moment, we generate about 0.56% per month on each research. So that means it takes about 200 months to finish a research level and unlock brand new technologies. Now, you can increase your research efficiency 
efficiency by having proportionally more citizens over everyone else in your empire. At the moment we have a population of 91. If all 91 of them were citizens, we gain a 300% increase on our research rate. Which means instead of researching at 0.56, we start researching at 3% per month. Which as you can imagine, completely destroys the game. So naturally that's something we're going to be doing. So as you can see, this game has various pops. We have say a freeman here, he generates local manpower. But above him we have citizens who generate gold from commerce and also research points. So naturally we're going to take this freeman and we're going to spend 15 oratory power and he's suddenly going to become wabam a citizen and now if we go to our technology page our research efficiency is actually slightly increased and so is our research points so now we research ever so slightly faster and naturally we're going to increase this a whole lot more as you can see about 26 percent of our population are citizens uh probably the 21 freemans we could really do with convincing them to uh to not be freemans and instead be citizens because the nation of cornova which i'd quite like to attack is sadly a vassal state under corinthia so that's a bad idea but in the north we have Cavartia and these guys seem quite nice you know they got 24 pops 14 cohorts uh, I think we should probably we go to war with them together. national commerce income has increased and monthly wages for characters decreased yeah I love this technology is really strange in this game because there are technologies which just allow you to pay your characters less I don't know the logic behind that the idea that makes no sense like they're doing the same job but we're just paying them half the money for it that doesn't particularly seem very fair to me if I'm honest oh well right so my clan chief's just gonna run around and de siege my lands the only issue is they their loyalty is so low they will no longer follow any orders which is a shame there's not much i can do sadly it would be very annoying to get the civil war so i do need to be careful and make sure that the civil war doesn't fire at the moment they're very very spicy boys uh something else i need to do is promote the rest of these free men to be citizens and our citizens could also do with oh what is it we need to do civilization effort yes we need to try and civilize this region and by civilizing a region we make our uh citizens happier because at the moment uh, they're not too happy yeah they do get quite depressed oh and the siege is won popularity has increased and we've fully managed to occupy them so naturally we're going to take all of their land thank you very much and as well as all of their gold so thank you for all of that and that seems perfect bam oh so there we go we've got a ton of gold and a ton more land which uh gives us an excess of stone which is nice i like this Oh, this is very good. Now, one thing you can do in this game is cheese the unrest system. So how unrest works is basically if you have unhappy people, uh, they don't produce as much stuff. They get grumpier, they're sad and so on and so forth. But there's a way that you can basically break it. If unrest is high, loyalty of your province falls. But in your capital province, that's the entirety of this region here, your loyalty can never drop. So if you bring in a load of unhappy people, you can effectively research at an incredible rate, even though all of your researchers are cripplingly unhappy. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to upgrade this Freeman here to being a researcher. And even though he's unhappy at being a researcher, you know, he's still going to do all of our research for us. Now, one thing we want to keep an eye on is our technology uh, efficiency, basically. At the moment, as you can see, it's 58% efficiency. This is going to improve, okay? It's going to improve a lot. So we've got some citizens over here. I would like to move them. Now, where can we move them to? Uh, well, we want to move them to this settlement over here, Cartosium. And the reason why is because it borders our capital. And then the next time we move them, we can move them into the capital so we select all of our citizens here and so now we want to move the citizens from here into islam our capital so yes we move in the citizens the unhappiness is quite high but hey we've got a lot of sciencey boys lying around and this should slowly as we upgrade our people uh, lead to happier happier more productive people right so we've got any freemen lying around oh my goodness this is a ridiculous amount of freemen right freemen are useless so we're gonna move oh god they cost 20 we're gonna need a lot of <laughs> civic power lying around but as soon as we get that it's all good oh we need a new war chief okay uh you can be the war chief so we go cohort recruit speed is now faster nice oh coronova's getting invaded <sighs> maybe i should do something about that maybe an invasion uh, now one thing we can do to basically break Corinthia is if we attack their subject nation instead of them uh, we basically have a super duper easy war due to the fact that they won't call in any of their allies they'll only defend their tiny little crappy subject uh, so that's exactly what we're going to do <laughs> we're going to get our army lined up on the border well we're going to need a bit of manpower first but as soon as we've got the manpower sorted mwah, success also our research efficiency has gone up to 62% uh, so of course we just need to improve it even more have we got any freemen lying around yes you okay you need to be promoted Bam. And of course, 
You promote one, increases the efficiency. That's how this game works. Um, and I'm going to promote my Freeman over here. Oh my goodness, look at them. 8% happiness, yeah. We're going to definitely promote them to be citizens. And now if we check our technology, we can see we're now researching an efficiency of 87%. A significant improvement over what it once was. There we go. Everyone's a citizen now. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. So now if we check our technology efficiency, 124% efficiency. Hmm. So now we research at 1.4%, which you might remember is about 50% uh, better than when we last checked. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we can check the score levels. Yeah, Egypt is currently at 1,000 score. Uh, Rome is second and Maori is first. We've got Arcadia and then Thrace and Carthage. Okay, quite interesting. But yes, Egypt is indeed fourth. Where about to we? We're 20th? <laughs> Why on earth are we 20th? Okay, we're now 19th. You know what? I'll take that. I'll take that. Not bad at all. Maybe we should go to war. But for that, we're going to need some oratory power. And as soon as we have that, bam, it's war time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we must sally our defenses against many a true nerd. The greatest threat the British people have ever faced. Oh, civil war has started. Cool. That's fine. <laughs> Looks like we've got a civil war to deal with now. Oh, great. That's fine. Yeah, civil wars are pretty annoying, but we can deal with them. Apparently the AI wants to attack me here. Oh, wow, the civil war is failing. This is great. Oh my goodness, yeah, the civil war really is failing. Um, right, I guess I need to chase these civil war armies down and defeat them before they can get their morale back up. But I'll get these tiny little one stacks here to do a bit of light sieging for me. Right, I think we're ready for our war because we've got some good armies here and good armies here. Fabricate claim, bam. Right, I think we're almost ready for our war. Oh, this is gonna go well. 15th of September, we can declare the war, ladies and gentlemen. And now let's go to war. Declare war. Bam. Take Corrin over. Away we go. It's war. And of course you have no morale. Why would you even have morale? Yes. <laughs> Why would I even expect you to worry about difficult concepts like morale? Your army is going to be destroyed because of this, just so you know. Oh, there we go. That's their army dead. What a fight this is shaping up to be. Yes, my men are objectively better, but our, our numbers just aren't high enough, really. Definitely they have the numbers advantage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Can I get some mercenaries, please? <laughs> this is uh, not a good sign. That's a defeat. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Okay, maybe I need to do a piece up. Super peace. I'm gonna hazard a guess and say this one's perhaps a defeat. <laughs> So my plan, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to leave uh, Brigandia to its own devices. Um, it's uh, not in the best state at the moment, uh, given the whole, you know, massive war against the AI. So uh, instead, uh, we're going to move up here to Taxalania. And the reason why is this is a very unique nation. It has 32 people. And as you can see, 11 of them are citizens and 14 of them are freemen. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this nation and convert everyone into being a freeman and because it's all one big region this is one big region we will have no unrest problems whatsoever and we're going to snowball research into the stratosphere ladies and gentlemen get ready to sit back relax grab your cups of tea as we go into the greatest brand new nation to be fair both the times i've lost it's mostly due to my inexperience and undervaluating the ai ai is a bit stronger than it looks so yes but we will find a way to defeat them ladies and gentlemen and ride our people to success and glory Yes, look at that top hat spam. It's perfect. Right, I am very excited to see what we can do as our nation because, um, yeah, there are a few cheesy little special things we can do. I mean, 32 population is crazy. Other things we'll be doing is we'll be, um, yeah, we'll be basically choosing the population growth mechanics of this game. Immediately, to begin with, uh, we need to take a look at our technology. As we can see, we've researched currently at a rate of 118. So we're at tech level 4, which isn't bad at all. In fact, we're 21 years ahead of time. So that's actually brilliant. 21 years ahead of time, but we can improve this, okay? So we're going to go to our lovely macro builder and promote all of the freemen in our nation. So there we go, promote all of you. So we go, all of our pops have been promoted up. And so now if we check our technology, uh, we can see that we now research at a rate of 254, which translates into 2.7% research per month. That is incredible. Maybe we should promote some of these tribesmen. 279%, okay, let's, we do want to get this up to 300%. Promote this tribesman. And now if we check our technology, 297%, good stuff. Oh, so uh, our military technology, we're researching at 2.9% per month, despite the fact that we are 34 years ahead of technology. So it's fine. Everything is fine. We'll make an army over here. It wants to be called the First War Band. Uh, we're going to call it instead the 100 Statman Army. How are we doing at the moment? 299% increase over base research. That seems quite good. And of course, our lovely little researchers here, They, because of their skill, they also add in a bit of bonus. So uh, good old Gwendolyn here adds 125% increase in research. So that's not bad at all. That's an... Oh, 3%! 
decent. Oh, so that means we can do a tech that would normally take an empire 200 months in about 33 months, despite the fact that we're 33 years ahead of time on all of our technologies. Mm. Oh, moral education plus 10% research. Yes. Oh, I'm getting that bad boy. Now it's going to go even faster. Okay, so yes, now our omens come to an end. We can do a new omen. And our omen power is at 126% due to our incredible religious unity, meaning we can increase our research points by 12%. So we do that. I'll go to research and we're now generating 9.3 research points and we're researching an efficiency of 300%. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, research is capped at a efficiency rate of 300%, but by just being at this efficiency rate of 300% and just having more citizens, the total research points that your citizens are producing is increased. So we're on we're on tech 6. Uh, Carthage is still on tech 0, if I remember correctly. How's Egypt doing? Egypt's on 4444. Four, four, four. <laughs> Frace. Frace is on 1111. One, one. <laughs> ah, 4.55 morale. Yes, perfectly balanced. All right, you know what, let's do a bit of colonization. I want more researchers, basically, so that we can increase the fundamental points we're generating. So I'm going to grab one of my citizens. I'm going to move them down to Hexalia. Because I've managed to move 10 citizens into here, we can now start the colonization process. And we're going to colonize this region here using a citizen. Bam, they're in. So that's an extra two tribesmen under our belt. But of course, we don't want tribesmen. We instead want, um, oh, wait, barbarians have arrived. God, we'll have to deal with that. Actually, wait, no, barbarians are fine because they have no morale. So there we go, three more citizens added into the empire. Yes, our research points are up to 11.3. Very nice. I mean, we are 46 years ahead of time. Oh, God. Oh, there's our tech level up. Tech level six now, so two techs ahead of the Egyptians. They've got all that money and they can't even compete with me. But look at our glorious nation. Oh, hang on a second. 97% citizen. <gasps> There's one single tribesman out there somewhere. We can't have that. Where is he? Oh, he's over here. There we go. Uh, I mean, I suppose we could technically have him. There's nothing wrong with having him. It's just he's not contributing to the technology. So bam and move. There we go. And now we have enough to colonize. So bam. You guys have said we should do it. So let's take Scotland. They have 16,000 men though. I'm placing bets on the fact that their army probably isn't fully maintained. Let's see what their, what was their army maintenance? Their army maintenance was on zero. Yes, <laughs> grab the army. Oh, this is lovely. Yes, can we stack wipe their army? Nope. Oh wait, yes, that was a sack wipe. <gasps> we did it. We got a surprise paradox. They haven't looked at you. Exactly. They haven't looked at the fact my technology is really high. I mean, like, look at Egypt. Scrubby Egypt with level four military advantages. Whereas you got Chad, <laughs> um, Scotland over here with technology level eight military. Mmm, 70 years ahead of time. <laughs> Basically ahead of time is based roughly on when the Romans should be getting it. So Scotland is about 70 years ahead of technology than the Romans. There we go. So that's a whole host of new land given and our technology efficiency has decreased because of it because guess what? There are non-citizens in these lands if you can believe it. I know, look at all these freemen. What are we meant to do with freemen? That's useless. Nine more citizens and now if we check our technology, oh, 269% efficiency, good. Basically if we, oh, occupy this province with 10 men we can colonize this province this province and orkney so that's three men here uh, add two so that's five and then add a further two so that's uh, seven men in total we'll be getting from colonization which is huge that's seven pops now, i think my base morale at the moment is somewhere around five uh so my armies can fight uh, basically to the death um they're gonna run out of manpower before they actually retreat uh, which can be useful um my i'm able to go down the army traditions faster because of also taking up uh, my maintenance is lower on basically everything and my research becomes faster and also i unlock kind of like new inventions as i go along so it's kind of a slow snowball basically yeah really quite useful um i'm probably going to form more, more the technologically pit advanced than rome <laughs> exactly how it was exactly scientifically yep. accurate by the time rome lands yes we'll probably be about 20 techs ahead of them and it should create for an interesting situation well i mean you're going to be launching your your first space flight rocket and they're gonna be like looking at stone. Yes, yeah, I, by this point I will have made contact with the Blorg and honestly, if they invade the UK, we'll just leave, we'll go to space. All right, goodbye uh, Alliance friends. Yeah. I'm so glad <laughs> hey, I've been able what? to help you when, out. When you come back to Europe, when yes. you come back on your shiny, shiny new rocket, Remember us, okay? I will do, okay. I will do. Right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've done my bit today, ladies and gentlemen. We've broken the game to a happy amount. I'm very proud to see what we've done. Uh, the technological enlightenment of Taxelia is going great. It's going really, really well. 300% um, efficiency, 17.5. So yeah, we gain, oh god, eight, 66 years ahead of time. 
This is brutal, absolutely brutal, right? We need to get some inventions going to increase our technology speed, I think. That's gonna really help us, yeah. Like, that's gonna give us extra 10% research points, so that's gonna help us out massively. So yeah, those are the things we'll be doing next stream. And I'll see all of you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Farewell. Bye-bye.